This is part two of the technical overview on how I set up the Lumira 2.0 designer uh, application for product performance. My name is Ivar van der Zand, SAP Global Analytics. I'd recommend you to have a look at part one first. We now discuss the second section of the uh, dashboard. Um, I'm starting with um, the following page in the dashboard that you can see over here that um, is a uh, seems to be a simple bar chart with a combined line chart um, and also a uh, geospatial graph as we based next to it. What is special to the chart is that it combines via blending two data sources that have different grain. So the yellow line shows the budget performance, which is the data sources that we used so far. And population growth and market growth is from an external second data set that has a different grain. The base for everything I created in uh, Discovery. So as you can see in this chart over here, if I open that up, um, you can see that I have two data sources, so sales region that uh, gave me the budget performance. Sales region is on date level, for example, city level with long lets and a whole variety of other elements. And the second data source is uh, various different measures per country, so the digital adoption rate, market growth, population, for example, population growth. Um, and you can see that I linked both elements uh, over here. You can see how that is done via the linked data set um, on a different grain on country and year uh, level. So this graph is a blended graph of two data sets. Again, blending is combining data sets from different grain. Um, and I reuse that into my uh, designer application by copying uh, the sources as we discussed earlier and the application looks like uh, this we just check that and in the um, designer interface it looks as follows so i go to the expand market layouts over here you see the first graph and um, you can see over here that the data source is in this case uh, the number four market which provides the blending um, so uh, i wanted to absolutely test and prove that whether the blending which, which is one of the key features of discovery would uh, work very well in designer and i can confirm to you that it does if you uh, copy over a map and again this map was also simply created from within discovery um, then you can see that it brings over the two layers that I defined. Uh, so that works perfectly well. It uses Navtech in this case uh, for the long and the lats. One of the future ideas that I have is that I uh, will liaise with the people from Galicio using their extensions that we uh, already described in another blog, uh, which are way more powerful than the ones that are uh, available over here. Yet these ones, the SV ones, uh, do serve most of the purposes very well. In a second uh, expanding market page, I worked again with a grid layout with um, a definition of a number of cells. And what I tested over here, and again works very, very well, is an animated graph that I also set up in Discovery. So uh, a simple bubble chart looking again using the blending feature uh, combining budget performance the core data set number one with uh, the growth and digital adoption weights from a second data set which had another grain um, what i did i made a simple picture uh, over here with color coding so the top left area is where the uh, countries are with the weakest budget performance um, uh, ratio but with the biggest market growth so these countries have big chances to further grow so I might want to focus on them as uh, if I would be in the management team of our fictive company and the animation that I set up in um, discovery is also coming over very well this is a drop down box over here um, that uh, I use with an on click event 
to drive the funnel chart. So uh, in the drop down box, I just uh, uh, use simple binding. Uh, instead of using dimensions, I use the measures. And this is a one measure funnel chart. And every time you choose another measure, also the funnel chart is automatically adjusted. So a very powerful way of um, uh, saving space on your dashboard. Just use one of these boxes to drive the content of the other one. The geo section um, is relatively simple uh, in the sense that I reused uh, the ones that I created in Discovery. So it's all online as we based. Uh, it is multi-layer. There is some additional functionality compared to the previous versions in Lumira. I will highlight in a separate blog later on. Again, like mentioned, one of the ideas is, is to start using the Galicio extension, which on top of what can be done over here has some very interesting other features that you uh, might be interested in. But that's for a next video that I will create shortly from now. Um, then there are a few um, pages that uh, show some new features in um, Designer specifically. And one of them is the um, following. It is the uh, possibility uh, to uh, not only use a chart feeding panel, as you can see over here, we uh, already knew that from the past. So people can, uh, end users can, uh, for example, swap country and sales channel that makes the, um, the graph changing. They can assign their measures to another axis, for example, or say, I want this measure to be a line and the other should be a bar or um, um, a stack bar or whatsoever. Uh, interesting is the one on the right, which is a new property, is the chart property editor, which basically brings over all the properties that you can set with Lumira, which you can now bring to your end user. So one of the use cases that you could do is to put this one, this property on the panel, uh, hide that panel and just uh, add somewhere a little icon where you can um, provide the user with, by clicking on the icon, the possibility to change the graph on their visualization. Very nice feature, uh, very um, comprehensive in the sense that everything is embedded over there. So all the features that you see in uh, Discovery are also part over here. The next one is also a new one that I wanted to test. And again, it works very, very well. Uh, it's the adaptive layout. So what I did, I created the cell and I've put in this new block over here. If I would set it up, it's a uh, container element over here, adaptive layout. And if you bring that to the canvas, you can create certain blocks and everything that is in a block is respected in the exact same um, layout and visualization the moment that you change the size of your screen. Yeah, so uh, imagine that somebody um, makes his uh, browser smaller while looking at the dashboard. Uh, means that the uh, the graphs and the layout is still respected. I'll uh, I'll show you that uh, over here. If I go to next, oops, it's this one. Yeah, so over here, uh, this is the uh, the actual dashboard itself. So I put four graphs in four different blocks on purpose on uh, next to each other. And if I now um, make uh, my screen smaller, you can see that uh, the layout is still respected. Here we go. Yeah, and you see that it's, yeah, the moment that I come to a certain level, they put the graphs below each other. Um, and again, it works, uh, it works very, very, very well. Yeah, um, I didn't uh, apply the adaptive layout for the header and also not for the text. Uh, that's something to test for the next time, but I, uh, I'm very confident that that will work too. Next, what I wanted to show you is um, the following. Uh, I am currently working on scorecard. You have probably seen one of my other dashboards where I have the scorecard object working. The scorecard is uh, uh, a more complex one. So over here, I started to set it up. It is uh, something that I will spend a dedicated blog on the next time to uh, further explain to you. 
what I want to show you right now is uh, the following, and it was one of the things that really positively surprised me, which is um, the fact that the moment that you use a self-service template, uh, you can also reuse um, anything you have done so far. So if I run this template over here, it provides me with the following layout. So I can click systems uh, over here and uh, over here are all my systems, but there's one special in between input to sales DB Lumix. That's exactly the stuff that we have been working on so far. So I can just click that. So that's basically the core of my dashboard. Um, and uh, I'll select this one. Um, I slightly adjusted and changed the layout of the template to my personal preferences with the different blocks. But uh, this is a very, very strong feature for self-service data visualization. So I can, um, let me first narrow down a few of the metrics. So uh, let's use these three ones. And I can now do whatever I want with the data. So I can have a look at it per product. Uh, and split that up, for example, per month. Uh, I can right click and uh, ask for uh, the totals or subtotals or whatsoever. I can filter down and say, um, I only want to see the Blu-ray players, um, or I can <clears throat> take that filter again away. Over here, I can choose to combine this with a chart or have a look at the chart only. So if I take that, I get an interface that you probably all know quite well. Um, and over here, there is now a line chart. I can again um, decide to put this one to another YX. And this gives me this overview, uh, as you can see over here. I can bring this to a, a bookmark, uh, manage my bookmarks. And over here, I think I have one of the bookmarks that I recently created. So this is very, very powerful. What you can do is reuse the uh, content that you created in a dashboard application into your self-service template. Thanks for your attention.